Alrighty guys, hello and welcome back to the show. So we have a 2v2 for you guys today. This was done on the 2v2 matchmaker. Interesting. Little uh, <laughs> from uh, whoever built out uh, adaptive uh, criteria. Criteria? That's the map that we're playing on today. Uh, 2v2, we'll call team one up here at the top, team two down at the bottom. Let's get right into introducing our players. So starting kind of from top to bottom. In the rear position, we have Wounded Elk Noob. He is playing as Seraphim, going first land. Got a couple pauses going on there. Getting to work on some mass extractors next. His teammate to the south is Tex. He is playing UEF, also going first land. I don't think that either of these players are going to be necessarily focusing on air as dedicated air players, um, just because this is a 2v2. But this does look like it could be set up for, you know, kind of a, a 3v3 or 4v4 kind of match. Anyway, love this guy's name. Me being from Texas, I have no idea if Tex is actually from Texas, but respect, man. And let's shift over to Team 2. In the forward position, we have Shinobu playing as Cybran. He has gone first land, already to work on the hydrocarbon power plant. And last but certainly not least, we have Harzer99 playing as the UEF, going first land. Looks like second air with the Jason C off, to that, off of that hydrocarbon. So while these guys are getting set up, uh, you know, I really wanted to uh, just take a second and thank everybody who has gener generously supported the channel. Um, I've recently cracked 300 subscribers. I think I'm at 315 and I honestly had, whenever I kicked this off, I had no idea it was going to get, you know, even to this point. I kind of hoped, you know, that's the reason why I started the channel. I kind of hoped that it would, uh, you know, be successful and people would, uh, people would want to hear <laughs> the ramblings of, uh, of a, a guy like myself, but uh, it's very um, inspiring, very humbling to uh, see the support, see the comments coming in, um, having you guys reach out to me on Discord and uh, the FAF client as well, providing me replays, things like that. It's just been a fantastic experience and I wanted to thank you guys uh, so much for um, all of the help and the support. There are a lot of people that have gone into uh, there are a lot of people that have really helped shape kind of the way that my channel has uh, taken. And uh, just a couple off the top of my head that I do want to shout out. Um, Nicholas H, Hardy Ninja, Armacham, uh, George, Wilkin Terrace. A lot of these guys were my original subscriber base and have uh, spent a lot of time uh, putting comments in the comment section, helping me get better as a player. Um, and just being overall very supportive. So this is not meant to be an, ex uh, an exhaustive list of everybody by any stretch, um, but those are a few of the people that come to mind that have been instrumental in supporting this channel. So anyway, let's go back to the game and I'll stop blubbering. Uh, we do have a drop coming out from uh, Shinobu as well as a similar drop coming out from um, Wounded Elk Noob. So uh, looks like they're going to be dropping forward engineers and I would imagine making their way up to this northern plateau. So we're going to drop one there um, and I would bet that he's going to drop one there and then drop the remainder there. And Wounded Elk Noob is going to be taking maybe a little bit of a longer route. This is actually not showing me his, his drop. Maybe he's dropping them all off there. Maybe he hasn't decided yet. Okay, dropping three, one, and then one up to the top. So. Um, both teams making a play for this northern plateau. It looks like uh, Shinobu is going to edge out wounded elk noob there just very slightly in order to uh, gain control of that northern plateau. Uh, similarly, we have a C6 as well as another C6 actually um, looking to drop this southern plateau. Interceptors are out from uh, Tex and actually that air transport just decides to drop its engineers off or engineer, singular, um, and bug out. But these interceptors should be able to mop that up relatively easily before the uh, responding air forces from Harzer can respond. Oof, I hate it when this happens. Whenever you uh, drop engineers and then uh, somebody has a bomber and just takes out a nice little clump of engineers and that is exactly what just happened to Harzer there um, from Tex, from Tex with love. Um, everybody's really just getting into position right now. There's, I think, a good amount of reclaim on this map. Yeah, so we've got bands along the edges as well as around these mountaintops. So um, especially pretty large reclaim areas here in the uh, kind of 
I don't know what you would call that. Like, a, it looks kind of like the end of a bone to me. Um, lots of good reclaim, though, to help get your early economy online. And this forward base for uh, Wounded Elk Noob is now going toe to toe with the forward base for Shinobu. Looking at factory counts, you got four factories there for Shinobu, while for Wounded Elk Noob, it looks like we're only three with a fourth one up. So Shinobu should be able to produce a little bit more spam. He does also have a good deal of spam coming from uh, supporting factories that he has uh, built out in his main base. Potentially having power troubles though, and just you know building power generators wherever you can. But you gotta do whenever uh, you're making a ton of actions per minute and uh, you cannot be bothered with uh, some of the more menial aspects of the game. But like we talked about, this is a 20 by 20 map. It's a 2v2. It's gonna take a little while for uh, things to fully get into, fully get into swing here. I am casting a good number of games tonight. Um, wife is at work, puppy's asleep. So hopefully <laughs> the puppy stays that way. Uh, so we're gonna be doing a couple of casts. I'll also be doing a co-cast with Stasm. Um, he's helped me out on a couple of the science videos in the past. So look for that as well in the future. Down here, a couple of Mantis sneaking by. Um, wounded Elk Noob's Vanguard forces and we'll be able to take out and bag these three mexes. Does look like Wounded Elk Noob though was able to take control of this Northern Plateau. And it looks like Shinobu is none too happy about that and we'll be sending a an engineer or multiple engineers to respond to such treachery. And Tex was able to take that, take control of the bottom plateau, but we have a land factory coming in from Harzer, so uh, expect to see that switch hands here relatively quickly. Now it's going back the other way, so Wounded Elk Noob, none too thrilled. Shinobu would dare send his forces to the end of his bone and uh, is going to be taking him back. Mantis here trapped on an island. I'm seeing, uh, I feel like this is like 300 right now. Except in uh, the movie 300, there wasn't a transport to come airlift the surviving versions uh, off of the cliff. Although that transport's going to die anyway, so, you know. Goes around, comes around. This is why... Uh, this is why the Cobra Kai motto is so important here. Strike first, strike fast, strike hard. Now Shinobu is going to strike next, but he's going to strike harder. All right, so maybe the Cobra Kai motto isn't necessarily the greatest thing here. Um, but there's a lot of posturing here between the spam forces of Wounded Elk Noob and uh, Shinobu. Such an interesting name, Wounded Elk Noob. I wonder if he's a, like a big game hunter. Hmm. And that southern plateau that we were talking about, there were a couple of strikers that looks like they got airlifted, but uh, they're not moving right now, so this land factory will be able to build responding forces and secure this southern plateau for team numero 2. is doing great damage in the middle. Bombers, though, looking to kind of mix things up a little bit. So, looking at air, not really sure who has air control right now. Wounded Elk Noob is on 11 interceptors, and uh, Shinobu is on 10. Okay, so relatively even, but uh, Shinobu is definitely utilizing air to give himself an edge on the ground here. Carpet bombing factories, dams, zooies, and the like. And the spam engages once again. These guys are just uh, really just teasing each other right now. No heavy commitment from either side. Let's take a look at the south. We've there hasn't been a whole lot going on in the south. Texas 
got a uh, squadron of mech marines and strikers that are making a run by past some of Harzer's forces here in the middle. Scrambling forces to respond from, uh, looks like some gathering points down here. Should be able to mop that up. I don't think any real damage was done from Texas forces there. Um, and Tex looks like he is also going to be losing control of the of his end of the bone. Another drop in from Tex. This one looks like it has strikers. I don't even know if there's an engineer on there. Nope, just strikers and a scout. So, looking to really just do more damage instead of uh, taking control. Transport does get shot down though, so no follow-up. Tex is up to T2. He's got some stingers out. Those are going to be uh, claiming the lives of some civilian structures. Well, not civilian as in like the game, but mass extractor resource production centers. There we go. That's what I was looking for. Escorting these as well with his interceptors. Where are we at from a tech standpoint for team number two? So up to T2 air. Got Janus on on tap here and shinobu is also a t2 air so both these guys prioritizing air over ground uh, which kind of makes sense just given the size of the map um, but i would expect to see i would expect to see some t2 ground action coming in here as well a little bit of an air entanglement harzer brings in his interceptors to assist shinobus are pretty well and truly mopped up here and I think that's, it might be air control. How many we got here? 25 for Harzer. So that may be air control. I'm not sure. Just by eyeballing it. But this stinger is still, uh, still stinging away. Here, these guys are still teasing each other. This, uh, <laughs> this bone looks like it's going to swap hands once again. Maybe. Or we're just going to keep reliving the same story of the Persians that got kicked off the cliff in 300, where uh, tanks are going to run to the end of the causeway, realize they have no room, or they're going to just run into this auto gun and meet their fate that way. Now we see the spam start to collide. I got to say, I favor Shinobu in this mix up. He's going to be able to pretty well envelop. Wounded Elk Noobs land forces here and even get some of these Mantis past. But not feeling great about it quite yet. Bomber's out for Wounded Elk Noob as well, so um, air control looks to be within Team 1's grasp right now. Or in T1, Team 1's grasp right now. Uh, as we still got these stingers causing all sorts of problems all over the map from Tex, and we also have T1 bombers starting to harass Shinobu's land forces um, in the middle. From an eco perspective, these guys are real close. So less than 1k separating them. From the mass side of things, Team 1 has invested what looks like a little bit more into energy production, though. But with energy, as long as you have enough, you'll be fine. Bomber's still doing some work here in the middle. <laughs> Bomber's up to three ranks of veterancy. That one's also at three ranks of veterancy. So these uh, Sinvays, that's what I'm going to call them. Not sure if that's how you properly pronounce it. He wouldn't work here. Uh, Jane is out for Harzer. Yep, it's mopped up by the interceptors, though, as I think there were only two or three. It's, uh, Janus can handle about two to three interceptors, but not however many wounded elk noob has here. 25. Well, 27. If you count the six that are out of fuel. This land push, though, is still causing Wounded Elk Noob a good amount of issues. He does have T1 PD in here to help assist, but there's just a lot more land commitment from Shinobu. Also up to T2 land, so gonna have some rhinos on the field if we don't already. 
I'm not seeing any rhinos. Meanwhile, in the south, things have been a little bit quieter from a land perspective. Tex is looking to circle around on this side, the very southern corner. Can potentially get in here and do some damage to some nexes. Um, not a whole lot more super vulnerable stuff there. And uh, Harzer is going to be pulling his units to uh, respond. Now we have Volthus out for Wounded Elk Noob. So the battle up to up north, the battle for the north, rages on. And now, it looks like we do have some Cyclones in here gifted over from Parser, so... Shinobu looking to take the reins and take control of the air engagements and does mop up Wounded Elk Noob's interceptors, so... Air control once again changes hands. Doesn't look like Tex has a whole lot of interceptors to his own name at just yet. Uh, but with that being said, these Volthus are going to be history. That is really the biggest contention point right now. Still in lockstep on mass. Everybody's reclaiming a good amount. You know, pulling up the reclaim on the map. Everybody's kind of cleaned off their sides of the initial reclaim. There is a gigantic mass field here. These Januses go to work now though with their air superiority that they've, the Shinobu has gained the carpet bombing or it's napalm I don't know if napalm you still use the term carpet bombing wounded elk noobs forces to devastating effect here and we are at t3 air from Tex goes straight to work on an ambassador he is probably power stalling like nobody's business. Oh, nope, he's mass stalling so bad it doesn't matter that he's power stalling. These things, though, strap bombers, oh boy. A lot of energy, a lot of juice goes into making those uh, little tactical nukes. Volthus are also, or stingers, sorry, also harassing down here. There is an archer in this mix. These guys go to work on a railgun, which looks like it should complete. Texas set up his land factories here. Ours are still using the Janus to devastating effect, just created walls of flames that these tanks have to go through to get to their opponents. And up at the top, it looks like Wounded Elk Noob's position has been well and truly overrun. That strat that we were talking about is now completed. And let's see where he ends up sending that bad boy. What do we got here for targets of opportunity? You got power generator there. Got another power generator under construction. I mean, they could hamstring the entire power grid if they wanted to. Where'd it go? Uh-oh, running into interceptors. It's gonna get shot down. Oh, barely makes it away. And then we have uh, Wounded Elk Noob's Interceptors as well as an ASF from Tex coming in to mop up Shinobu's air forces here. Another ASF joins the fight as well with two more inbounds. So 
Uh, this is again going to be a swap of hands in the air superiority side of the house. As these guys tangle once again with Har Harzer 99's smaller air force. And where did that strat go? No, it ran away. I think it made it away. Yeah, and this is, uh, I don't know. So I don't know where, I don't know where that strat went. They may have uh, ended up shooting it down, um, but it doesn't look like they picked anything off in the opposing team's bases. Wounded Elk Noob though, getting well and properly overrun here by uh, the land forces of Shinobu. So overwhelmed his initial position. He's trying to set up some other factories back here, but none of them are producing anything, unfortunately. So it could use that air superiority, put out some uh, broadswords or some stingers, something to hit back at this wave of yellow cascading across the screen right now. There is a broadsword out. Is that the strap bomber? I think that's a new strap bomber. So strap bomber out. Targets the air HQ. Takes a good piece of the power grid and does some damage to Shinobu's commander as well. There's a lot of AA though. Good number of tracers. The broadsword is not very long for this world. Can't seem to negotiate its way around the shield and I think that broadsword will get shot down too so Shinobu oh but there's another one coming in oh but he goes after the shield generator go after the commander not the shield the commander and that one gets shot down too is there another one on the way there's another one on the way but every single one of them goes across this little bank of rail guns and tracers over here as well so Anything that makes it to Shinobu's base is already damaged. And it uh, looks like Tex is just going to bug out. Meanwhile, back home, we have T1 or T2 PDs being hastily scrambled from uh, Wounded Elk Noob. And I think they will be able to clean up this T1 spam, which looks like it was shift g there. So these guys decide to uh, go around the other way. So here we have a classic example of each of everybody having both teams having dominance in various areas. So broadsword comes out and then leaves promptly. <laughs> Could be used to help clean up some of this wave of uh, Shinobu that is washing over everything. Razor 99 has a nice little push as well, taking out this uh, secondary starting location for Tex. And another broadsword comes in. Uh, additional broadswords down here. So Team 1 is using their air superiority to relatively good effect. I just don't think they've been able to cause any real lasting damage as of yet. Natha's out as well for Wounded Elk Noob and another Volthu. And Texas shifting his land forces to respond to Shinobu's incoming threat. There are still units that they're trying to get, <laughs> get rid of out of the base. Thing does have enough range there's just too many of them i guess for the t2 pds to handle immediately but uh wounded elk nukes, nukes comm should be able to uh should be able to deal with it now we do have four broadswords vectoring in on it looks like harzer maybe or just taking out mass points i don't know if they're actually going to go in for the comm kill doesn't look like he has a whole hell of a lot of AA. I 
but I think he's just going to be content taking out mass extractors for now. Still working to cleanse the infection that washed through their bases. One Volthu, hero of Volthu, taking out rhinos and Medusa. Alrighty, things have slowed down a little bit. From a mass perspective, no longer an even game anymore though. Team 2 getting about 18-ish, 18, 19k extra mass out of the map from Team 1 right now. And even with the work that Tex has done with uh, his broadswords, it doesn't look like it's been quite enough to bring him back to 100% even on mass generated either. It looks like Team 2 is edging Team 1 out slightly. on the mass side of the house. Push coming in from Tex against Harzer's position here in the middle. That looks like mostly T1 though. There are some pillars in this mix, so pillars should be able to uh, clear out a good number of this. And then there's reinforcements coming from Shinobu as well, but uh, looks like Team 1 is now able to push out a little bit outside of their bases and hopefully get a little bit reestablished here before this uh, this next hammer comes crashing down on them. Uh, Shinobu has reacted to the T3 air threat. Has cranked out some interceptors, got some Gemini in the air. Uh, not very many though, only five. And there are plenty more wasps on the field for Tex all about positioning and it looks like Tex has both the positioning and the numbers to take out uh, Shinobu's Air Force such as it stands right now. And Tex's push seems to have stalled out. I think these tanks ran out of gas. <laughs> They're just hanging out and uh, letting Harzer encircle them. This Voltu has killed so many units. It's still adding more notches to its belt until it gets tired and uh, decides to land. He's like, yeah, I've had enough for today. I had a big day. Took out like 20 units just on my own. I'll take the rest of the week off. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> there are some skyboxers in this mix. By some, I mean a ton. So Tex is going to have to be a little bit careful. Uh, team 1 seems to have, uh, or Team 2 seems to have caught up to Team 1's antics in the air, mixing in lots of mobile static artillery as well as pushing to T3 air themselves. So Team 1 going to have to be a little bit more surgical in the way that they uh, approach these air engagements in the future and how to use it offensively to cripple their opponents. We have to push up the northern side this time. Uh, runs into an army from... Uh, Runs into an army from Wounded Elk Noob, but uh, these tanks also appear to have run out of gas and are uh, just hanging out and sitting still. Big air push coming in from Tex, utilizing these broadswords, but runs them a little too close to those tracers. One dies, I think the rest are gonna make it out. And then air superiority fighters scrambled to respond. ASFs from Shinobu also on the field in uh, slightly larger numbers. Tex still has air control, but Wounded Elk Noob, it looks like, is really just focused on trying to recover his position and his side of the map. We do have a large wing of Nathas ready and waiting 
to begin carp or to begin uh, taking out Shinobu's forces. And we'll do so actually to relatively good effect. There are a lot of sky slammers though in the mix there for Shinobu, adding a good amount of AA. As Voltu getting a second wind of energy engages to get shot down by the sky boxers. Maybe should have stayed on PTO there, buddy. Another run by the Nathas, doing some work, taking out some more units. A Gemini dispatch this time, though. Those Nathas are uh, not well equipped to deal with the uh, air superiority fighters. It's like sending an A-10 up against a F-4. And the news seems to be tightening here. On uh, team number one, we have additional units pushing up. Although Tex is able to maintain a presence in the middle of the map. Has some engineers here, a couple factories that are as well soon to die here, but still able to maintain some presence in the map. These broadswords now go to work on this push from Shinobu. Engineers trying to wall this off funnel these guys into a little bit more of a choke point, something a little bit easier to manage. Last satellites of uh, wounded elk noob are going to get taken out here. And engineers hurriedly working on some point defense here. These broadswords go in against the skyboxers don't fare too terribly but it's definitely not great we should try and spread them out a little bit i say that but that's definitely not something i would be capable of in that situation i'd be dead right now actually let's just uh we can call a spade a spade <laughs> So now comes the turtle. We do have a UEF on the field, so turtle is definitely an option. Uh, these guys tank in uh, plasma cannon fire. Would love to not lose that T3 mechs though. That is uh, kind of mission critical here. And what are we working on down here for team number two? So getting more extensive power grids set up uh, really both of them going uh, more full in on air production. It looks like Shinobu is making a heavy commitment to air superiority. Oh, and Wounded Elk Noob finishes in Athoda. All right, Caster Blind. I didn't even see that getting constructed. Now that could be just what Team One needs to get them back into get them back into this. Uh, back into this game. Start hitting back a little more. And I would I would assume it's been scouted. Yeah, so Shinobu knows that there's something there. Doesn't know exactly what it is. But he knows it's big. It's nasty. So that Athoda looks like it's really just gonna stand guard. So we got a, a Wasa queued up for uh, Wounded Elk Noob. And just a ton of units here. The Athoda does get sent out to engage. That is just gonna wow. 
wipe out a whole lot of uh, this spam. Great, uh, great reclaim. Yeah, he got engineers. They're like, yep, that's mine. Coming in right after him. Air engagement happens as well. It looks like Tex has the numbers here. Be able to take out these Gemini and retain air control. Pretty important that he do that because broadswords seem to be very critical for uh, Team One's defense. And this Thoda just uh, begins walking its way across the map. And we have a very large push coming in to the southern on the southern side of uh, Team One's base here. And that ass washer is uh, Awasa, sorry. About 50% of the way done. I also have gun speed and range coming in for Wounded Elk Noob. So looking to use any and all tools at their disposal to defend their bases, even if their commanders have to get involved. Broadswords get dispatched. Do run into all of the skyboxers and bangers. But are able to do enough damage. The Athoda is literally just like marching its way across the map right now. And there's still a little T1 PD here. It's just uh, picking off units as it goes by. You know, no big deal. The mobile AA is uh, actually being relatively effective against the broadswords. I guess if you have enough you got enough, you can make it work. And the Awasa is now 36,000 hit points out of 52,000. So climbing slowly, benefiting a good deal from the amount of reclaim that that Ithoda just got. Ithoda again engages, already got 75 kills to its name. Just been uh, mopping up T1 units left, right, and center. Or really just center on this map because it's just marching its way down the map. Now we'll see uh, what this uh, Awasa can do for uh, team number one here. They do still have air control, I believe. Let's do a quick uh, ASF check real quick for Shinobu. We have 52 ASF and for Tex got, come here. 43. Okay, so about 20% fewer ASFs for team number one. Um, but in air battles, if you do have some ASF or a good number of ASF and you position them correctly, you can sometimes be able to uh, make them worth a little bit more. We'll see the Awasa finishes. Have they scouted it? So they do see it on radar here. They will uh, see it coming. I don't know if they've called it out yet. They did see it there for just a second. No doubt a lot of their attention is on this photo here in the middle. To do it turning around. It's taking a massive beating in the back. Got its first rank of vet, halfway to its second. And this Awasa is moving around the sides of the map. They have no radar signature on it. Meanwhile, the Sathoda drops into the yellow. Let's see if he can make its way into the base. It's got a lot of stingers and a lot of renegades on top of it, as well as Corsairs hitting it from above. See if it can do some infrastructure damage here to Shinobu. It moves in, drops down. Begins targeting key infrastructure. Probably take out that HQ. But I think that's about as far as that guy's gonna make it. Oof. 
Oh man, let me tell you, what a what a parting gift there. Last couple of shots to come off of it, take out uh, three factories, a power generator. HQ is still up though, so not the end of the world. This Awasa though is inbound. They do have a radar signature on the opposing Air Force. This Awasa is gonna do gonna do some more damage here to Shinobu's base. They're gonna one pass it. They are gonna one pass it. The crash is also gonna take out a healthy chunk of Harzer 99's base. ASF start tangling in over the top. I think Shinobu though has the numbers here. I don't think Tex is gonna be able to pull that one out. Scrambles additional ASFs here. Really could just start taking out these stingers that are moving their way across the map here. And this is a sniping force. Go to work on the uh, T3 power generators. And it looks like Team 1 has had enough. Good game, well played, guys. Interesting concepts. Um, it's always fun to see. Uh, it's always fun to see one team gain control of one theater of war, another team control another theater of war, and how it kind of works out. So in this particular game, Team One got air but wasn't able to capitalize it on it on it quite enough, and uh, Team Two was able to respond adequately with uh, mobile and stationary anti-air. So good game. Uh, I learned a lot watching games like this. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, keep an eye out for more casts and science videos from me in the future. And uh, as always, stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.